Okay, what we have here today is uh, my latest uh, prototype of the laser head alignment system and servo consistency checker. We are considering possibly manufacturing this product depending on what type of interest we get. Uh, basically what it is, is it's uh, four components. It's mainly designed for uh, T-Rex and T-Rex uh, clones, 450 size, fly bar and fly barless systems. Uh, this will be a um, swash plate leveler, a pitch gauge, a zero pitch check, and servo consistency for such things as centering and travel uh, throughout the pitch range uh, tester. So what we have here is four main parts. We have, a, we have the fly bar lock, we have the angular adapters for the blade grips for zero pitch detection, and we have the laser unit itself, which yes, it's just a laser pointer mounted to a very precisely machined block. Actually, all this machining was all done by billet aluminum. Everything was hand done. Now, the fly bar lock, this only has to be used if you have a fly bar helicopter. If you have a fly bar list, you only need uh, these three pieces, the consistency angle uh, meters and the laser unit itself, the laser mat, uh, pad. So what we have here is the fly bar lock first of all and basically how this works is this part right here sits on the button of your head. These two arms here grab the fly bar and what you do is you simply turn the screw and this piece here as you can see I'll exaggerate it a little bit. That's how that works. As you tighten this screw down, it pulls up on the fly bar against the head. Now this pin is in it for another reason. This is used for alignment purposes later on for our blade grips, for our main blade grips. So um, I've not seen anybody design anything similar to that. This is a one of a kind. This uh, was several hours of thought and uh, basically drinking a lot of beer and just sitting back and staring at the helicopter trying to figure out uh, how I wanted to put the system together and it kind of changed plans just a little bit throughout the course of the design but uh, the final design uh, I was blown away with uh, how this has worked out so far now like I said these things here basically these get placed in the blade grips right here and these are very precise true stainless steel rods extremely straight and this is a very high tolerance diameter that goes into the three millimeter hole in the blade grips and basically uh, and this will all be showed later on. This is just the beginning of a uh, whole video series on this. These basically one goes in each blade grip and you can detect angular differences um, based on uh, for zero pitch. That'll be for zero pitch alignment is what that's for. Um, this here is the laser unit. Yeah, it's just a laser pointer and a spirit level. But it's on a very precisely machined uh, CNC block with incredible accuracy. Um, and uh, yeah it's being held on with rubber bands but like I said oop, like I said it's a prototype so uh, bear with me so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start by uh, locking the fly bar and we're gonna show you that so let's go ahead and get to that point we're gonna have to move some things around here a little bit Now what I like to do is, on my helicopter, the very first thing I do after I take my blades off is you always need to have a reference point. You need to have something that you start with every time consistently. So what I've done is I just picked a random blade grip and I took a black Sharpie magic marker and went up underneath and colored the bottom of the blade grip. So from now on that will always be my reference blade grip. Now on my main blades I also mark a main blade and that will always be my reference blade. So my reference blade always goes into my reference blade grip. Now for the fly bar mount, the fly bar lock, loosen the screw to collapse the system and I also have a black dot on the end of this right here on the end of this post but not on the end of this post black dot here no black dot here so even the fly bar lock 
I always coordinate to the reference point. So my black dot, I look to see which of my blade grips is my reference. Okay, the blade grip in front right now is my reference blade grip. So I want my black dot on my fly bar lock to go that way. And it just simply sits on. The camera wasn't quite angled there quite right. Let me, uh, let me try to get the camera a little closer here. Okay, fly bar lock goes on, the hooks go under, it sits right on the head. We'll try to zoom in a little bit there so you can see the, the fit on the head button. Okay, now what we're going to do is we simply start to bring that screw in a little bit, like that. And as that happens, as you're tightening that screw down, kind of just wiggle it around in little orbital motions just to get everything to seat real nice. And just very little pressure, not much at all. And there, fly bar is locked. As you can see, I can bend the, the fly bar quite a bit, and that, that cage is not moving. It's moving the whole frame and main shaft and everything. So we're locked in right there. Now, the next thing I like to do, these units are precise out of the box. I actually use a fly bar and a uh, CMM measuring gauge. Uh, as a matter of fact, just to give you an idea of the level of precision we're working with here, this machine that this thing's sitting on is actually a CMM machine, a coordinate measuring machine. It's capable of measuring things to ten thousandths of an inch uh, using this uh, probe right back here. And this probe runs out on these arms and they're all running on air bearings and we can have incredible consistency here. It's sitting on a granite table. Very high-tech machine. Very cool. Very handy too. Um, so yeah, I'm all about precision and people who know me uh, say I'm overkill. You know, I'm the type of guy who will try to kill a fly with a sledgehammer. So um, that's just my nature, being a machinist, a precision machinist and working with CNC's and uh, whatnot. I'm used to working within thousands of an inch and sometimes ten thousands of an inch. Now for an RC grade helicopter, I'm not going to spend a week getting within a ten thousandth of an inch on an engineering task for it, but a thousandth of an inch tolerance, excellent for this. This is, it's still way overkill. What I have here is a set of helping hands. You get them from Radio Shack or wherever. Basically it's got little alligator clips on little arms and allows you to uh, solder wires and whatnot without having to hold them with your bare hand. But they also makes a great uh, gauge here for checking uh, the fly bar lock to make sure it's consistent. I've got a little piece of paper here with a little blue tab stuck on the end of it. And basically what we do is we just put that right up under there like that. And I don't know how well you can see it, but the blue tab's just barely touching. Okay, now keep in mind, I just put the fly bar lock on and put my gauge up there. I've done nothing else to make sure that everything's all right. I'm just relying on the fact that this really centered the fly bar right. So what I like to do now at this point, so I get down a little low and I look at my blue tab here so I get a good sight on it. Okay, got about uh, three or four thousandths clearance there between the blue tab and the fly bar. Now I like to use my tail rotor and spin the fly bar around so I don't disturb the head alignment or move the bird. And what I'm looking for is, and there we go, look at that, perfect. Bring it around again, double check absolutely perfect I just don't see how you can get any better than that so at this point our fly bar is locked now the next step in the process will be to uh, place our laser unit into our reference blade grip and my reference blade grip happens to be that one right there I can tell because my black dot here and I put that on the blade grip that had the black, black dot underneath so we always start with that now we're gonna point the laser in the direction of the leading edge of the blades and we simply slide it into our blade grip there and we take one of our angular zero pitch posts and this will actually serve as our mounting post now as you can see very snug fit in that three millimeter hole this thing has no play these stainless steel rods have no play whatsoever see that shakes the whole head and while we're here we'll go ahead and put the our second angular zero pitch rod into the back hole right there. 
So basically what we have now is we have the laser unit mounted on and this whole assembly right here, this is the entire kit. Fly bar lock, angular gauges for zero pitch alignment, and the laser unit. Now, bear with me because this is a long drawn out process to somebody who's never done this before. Once you do the laser alignment, you're going to be blown away by the accuracy and the ability to see how crappy your servos are if you're using cheap servos. Uh, if you have good servos, you're really going to be able to have an opportunity to see, uh, see them shine as far as their quality and their consistency, resolution, and centering ability, and slop. So at this point, I'm going to kill the video, and we're going to uh, continue the video upstairs in the bay with a practical hands-on test showing the unit actually in action and being used. So I hope you enjoy this and let me know what you think, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.